Ready? Good morning. Hello from all over the world. Most of us see what we want to see, what we expect to see. It's human nature, so we come by it quite honestly. Even when we encounter different information or images than what we have known, we often remain convinced that our previous thoughts understandings, impressions, and interpretations are still correct. It's called confirmation bias. And we all experience it in varying degrees. It is why even eyewitness accounts can be incorrect and unreliable. We see what we want to see. We see what we expect to see. We also avoid seeing what we don't want to see. We close our eyes, literally and figuratively, to people, situations, and conditions which make us uncomfortable, afraid, or even ashamed. What is God inviting us to see what we have not yet seen? Where is courage needed to see enough for our journey ahead? Let us spend a few moments engaged in prayer and reflection. We will look at three lines of scripture from Doctrine and Covenants 163, 4, and 10. After each scripture, we will reflect on a question. God, the eternal creator, weeps for the poor, displaced, mistreated, and diseased of the world because of their unnecessary suffering. Such conditions are not God's will. In what ways Am I blind to the suffering of others? Open your ears to hear the pleading of mothers and fathers in all nations who desperately seek a future of hope for their children. Do not turn away from them. What makes me so uncomfortable, I turn my gaze from it.
Do not turn away in pride, fear, or guilt from the one who seeks only the best for you and your loved ones. Come, come before your eternal creator with open minds and hearts and discover the blessings of the gospel anew. What ideas, perspectives, or situations are difficult for me to look at or listen to with an open mind? If you are comfortable, turn to someone close to you and briefly share with them something that became evident to you during this prayer of reflection. You will have three minutes to share with one another and we will come together when I ring the chime.
This morning, we will have the opportunity to see things that are different than what we expect to see. For example, we will sing a favorite heritage hymn in a different way. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper in a way that is not what you might expect. How does this challenge us to open ourselves to the leading of the Spirit, the perspectives, and other traditions? It takes courage to open ourselves to how God continues to call us as we respond the way of the living Christ will offer us sufficient life for our journey ahead. Collectively and individually, you are loved with an everlasting love that delights in each faithful step you take. God yearns to draw you close so that wounds may be healed, emptiness filled, and hope strengthened. Amen.
please pray with me? Our most holy Lord God and heavenly creator, as a body of your people who are a global family, we gather today surrounded by your grace and love and we offer our worship and adoration to you. Source of all life and giver of all grace in all things. We want to thank you for the blessings you have given each of us individually and as a community. We thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains life, for the food of this earth that nurtures life, and for the love of family and friends without which there would be very little happiness in life. We are grateful for the joy of being able to be amongst friends and family, some of which we have not seen in several years, and being able to renew those relationships by being in communion with one another. We recognize that there are those that are missing from this joyful reunion, and for that, we are sorrowful. But we know that you are with each of them, regardless of where they are. In this moment, in this place, Lord, we recognize and thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit as it surrounds each of us and fills this holy place of worship. As we are together today, Quiet our minds and still our hearts, for it is your loving ways that we all seek. May we be open to your voice, sensitive to your words, and alert to your calling. Strengthen our desire and capacity to be in relationship with you and with one another, for we know that all grace and love comes from you. Loving God, as we also prepare ourselves today to partake in the Lord's Supper, we are again reminded of the grace and love you have given us in that we are advised to reconcile our broken relationships and forgive those with which we are in conflict. With that grace and love, we are reminded of the baptismal covenant we made with you when we decided to follow Jesus, his teachings, and his life's example. With that grace and love, we know that you are with us here today. Finally, during our time together, we ask that you prepare our hearts that we may be able to receive the love that you've shown us Prepare our minds that we may be able to accept the gift of grace that you have freely given us. Prepare our spirits that we may recognize your presence through the Holy Spirit. And prepare our bodies to commune with you this day. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, 
who fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and took off, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. A Samaritan, while traveling, came upon him. And when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. Listen again to the story. Who is my neighbor? Who or what do I see? Am I passing by unseeing? Am I crossing to the other side of the road so I will not see? Listen again. Where are you in the story? A person was traveling alone. They fell into the hands of criminals who stripped and beat them leaving them half dead, lying in the road. A religious leader came upon them and stepped to the other side of the road. Likewise, another traveler saw and avoided the injured person. But a third person moved with compassion, stopped to help the injured soul.
It's been four years since we shared the sacrament of the Lord's Supper at World Conference. During that time, our lives have been disrupted by a global pandemic, cultural upheavals, wars, environmental crises, economic difficulties, and so much more. It's been a tough time. And sadly, we have lost beloved church leaders, members, and friends to the pandemic and other maladies. There are empty seats at our dining tables, in our churches, and here. Let's pause to remember them as we hold our grief together in mutual love. Thank you for that. At the same time, we have the scriptural assurance that the physically departed are now part of a great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us as described in Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. There's a spiritual relatedness beyond physical presence that encourages us to remain faithful to Christ and the gospel way. We feel that presence. During the last four years, as difficult as they were, we have continued to effectively offer ministry and witness of Christ around the world. And I want to thank you for your determination, your flexibility, your sacrifices, and your creativity you have done well. Today our theme is Courage to See. Sharing the Lord's Supper helps us see truth about Jesus Christ and the meaning of discipleship. Earlier, we experienced an expression of the parable of the Samaritan found in the book of Luke chapter 10. This parable teaches that whomever we encounter in whatever circumstance should be seen as our neighbor. As President Cram wrote, we are called to demonstrate Christ-like love with every person we encounter, setting aside any prejudice we may hold. And Christ-like love calls us to see and respond when there are needs or injustices. Coming upon the wounded man, the Samaritan saw him truly as a person. He saw what was needed to save his life. He risked responding even though the robbers probably were still lurking nearby. 
He saw what was needed for the wounded one to heal more completely and generously provided it. Opening our eyes to someone in need takes courage. How many people do we pass daily who are just longing to be seen? William Sloan Coffin, the late cleric and peace activist wrote, and I quote, no one need to be afraid of fear, only afraid that fear will stop him or her from doing what is right. Courage means being well aware of the worst that can happen, being scared almost to death, and then doing the right thing anyhow. The Samaritan courageously saw and acted, showing us how to love God and neighbor as disciples of Jesus. W. Paul Jones, theologian and author states, the heart of being Christian is metanoia, which means a reorientation in being in, one, in which one sees through the eyes of God by incorporating the mind of Christ. He goes on to write, the conversion is radical for it so changes a person that society's competitive lures lose their appeal. Instead, the Christian truly does want to love neighbor as oneself, does want to foster community over the self. Are we among the radically converted? Have we courageously reoriented our beings to see through the eyes of God by incorporating the mind of Christ? Let's not fool ourselves. The mind of Christ clashes with many aspects of our cultures and lifestyles, no matter how good or righteous we think we are. The mind of Christ is a profoundly different way of viewing ourselves, our interactions, our possessions, and our priorities. It moves us from self-centeredness to seeking oneness in communities that embody Christ's kind of love and justice. The Lord's Supper brings clearly into view the Jesus who stirred strong opposition because of his astounding perception of God's love and purpose in creation. And when Jesus revealed God's love in all its breadth and vulnerability, in a violent world, he became the victim of violence. The horror of this should shock us into examining our lives in a violent world that many seem content to preserve. This self-examination and reorientation of being is the beginning of salvation. 
the truth apparent in the Lord's Supper is that Jesus will suffer and die so that we can see and experience the extent of God's love. And Jesus' words and actions at the Passover meal before his crucifixion introduced a new covenant of forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace. He was crucified for that vision, fully trusting God for whatever would come next. Vincent Donovan wrote, and I quote, there will always be a cross somewhere in the midst of the Christian solution to evil, a cross of the pain involved in not returning blow for blow, a cross of the natural human bitterness felt in the presence of the experience of hatred and returning love in its place. In being merciful and peacemakers in a world which understands neither, there will always stand the paradox of the cross, a cross not for others, but for us. Jesus said that his disciples should take up their cross and follow me. The good news is that God raised the crucified Jesus and made him the forerunner of a new humanity, an emerging community of oneness and hope that as theologian Daniel Migliori wrote, no longer needs scapegoats, that no longer wills to live at the expense of victims, that no longer imagines or worships a bloodthirsty God, but that follows Jesus in the power of a new spirit. Remarkably, when we participate together in communion, spiritual awakening and transformation happens. As I think about that and the power of this sacrament, I recall this story. There once was a priest who regularly took his exiled faithful secretly into the forest and there lit a candle, told a story, said some prayers, and shared bread and wine. In time, some of the prayers became forgotten. As he further aged, elements of the story became lost. Concern lest the candle fully go out, the faithful remnant gathered anxiously around their ailing priest. He whispered, it is sufficient simply to break the bread and share the cup for that will tell the story. Everything we need is here. The Lord's Supper in symbol, word, and movement offers spiritual truth that opens eyes, transforms lives, binds us together, and sends us out as vessels of Christ's love. 
The sacrament of the Lord's Supper calls us to live cross-shaped lives in Christ-shaped community, embodying Christ's new covenant, new covenant of peace. Doctrine and Covenants 164, 9b states, the rise of Zion the beautiful, the peaceful reign of Christ awaits your wholehearted response to the call to make and steadfastly hold to God's covenant of peace in Jesus Christ. Today, in this communion service, may we have the courage to see that Jesus by giving up his life, offers us a new way of being human, a new way of being one with God and others. And through these emblems, Jesus says, I have opened the way for a new covenant of peace to heal yourselves, your families, your tribes, your societies, and your planet. Salvation in all its meaning. I gave my life so that you might have this opportunity. Through this sacrament, the Holy Spirit ushers us into the most intimate experience of oneness with Jesus Christ. Jesus is here with us. We are there at the table with him. Past, present, and future become the eternal now, in which we are bound spiritually to Christ and each other as sacred community through which Christ lives. That's the wonderful and mysterious potential of this moment. Listen to these words given as words of counsel to the church at the close of the last World Conference. Additional meaning is waiting to be discovered in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Renewing covenant with Christ includes the call to live as peaceful human beings who personify Christ's peace. Cherish opportunities to be spiritually formed by Christ's sacred meal of remembrance, reconciliation, renewal, and peace. Then go with conviction into the locations of your discipleship and be the peace of Christ. So here are two questions for you to ponder as we prepare to partake of the sacrament of communion together. First, how will we live Christ's covenant of peace during this world conference as we interact with people from multiple cultures with diverse perspectives on important issues? Second, 
how will we summon the courage to see where God is leading us next and to respond boldly, courageously, as a worldwide faith community committed to Christ's new covenant of peace. Lord, open our eyes so we may courageously see and act as you guide us forward.
You will receive the communion packets, the communion emblems, in a small packet. Please do not open your packet until all are served, the communion prayers and the communion prayers have been offered. Following the prayer offered today in Creole, I will indicate for us to open our packets and partake of the emblems together. In the packets are emblems that represent community of Christ services around the church. Corn tortilla, rice cake, bread, grape juice, water, and fruit juice. All the bread emblems are gluten-free. While they may be different than what you usually see in communion services in your congregation, they represent our diverse experiences and traditions and the blessings of global community. Each packet also contains words of blessing. These blessings come from members and friends around the church who celebrate in community with us this morning. Following the service, please take the emblem package with you and dispose of it responsibly, responsibly. the cup and the bag are both uh, made to recycle. If you do not wish to partake of the emblems, please take a packet so that you can participate in the words of blessing. Following the communion prayer, there is wrestling, there will be wrestling of paper when we open our packets, it will create noise. We wish to care for all who are with us in all of our diversity. So we will do this as carefully as we can to protect those with audible or auditory sensitivity. We do this together in hope. From 1 Corinthians, for I received from the Lord what I also hand to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you sit and eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. All are welcome at this table. All are welcome at Christ's table. The Lord's Supper or communion is a sacrament in which we remember the life, the death, the resurrection, and the continuing presence of Jesus Christ. In community of Christ, we also experience communion as an opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant and to be formed as disciples who live Christ's mission. Others may have different or added understandings within their faith traditions. We invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do so in love and the peace of Jesus Christ. Please wait until I indicate that it is time to open, open the emblem packets. We will partake of the emblems together after everyone is served. For our, on, for our online participants, please take this moment to gather your communion emblems. Na anda 
Now that all have been served, we will kneel as able for the combined communion, communion prayers. Dieu éternel, n'a pas demandé dans nos petits tours Jésus-Christ pour bénir et sanctifier Père ça et Dieu ça pour nommer tout le monde qui prend le prendre. Il va faire ça de façon pour y toujours songer. Quand accent petit tour. Pour vous témoigner au Dieu éternel que vous voulez garder avec vous nos petits toits. Pour vous toujours gagner comme souvenir et garder le commandement libre. Pour vous capable toujours gagner l'esprit avec vous. Amen. Let us, let us open our packets, read our words of blessing, and share together in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Please note, after we partake of the emblems, we will sing only verses 1 and 3 of hymn 384. Doesn't it sound kind of like the kindling of a fire starting to burn? Can you hear the sound of hope in this room? Can you hear the sound of a fire of faith starting to burn? Can you hear the sound of joy and hope and love and peace in this room? Perhaps we should sing about it. But be sure you follow me. Your first. The Spirit of God Sings 
Bonjour. Hello. N'oublions pas de manifester notre gratitude envers Dieu, notre Créateur, à chaque occasion qui se présente. Let us not forget to manifest our gratitude towards God, our Creator, at every possible occasion. En effet, Dieu, dans sa bonté, a toujours, trouvé son, a toujours prouvé son amour et sa générosité sans limite en créant de nouvelles opportunités. In effect, God in his goodness has always proved his love and his generosity without limits by creating, creating new opportunities. Dans les moindres détails de ma vie, je constate personnellement que pas à pas, Dieu marche avec moi et me révèle de nouvelles opportunités. In the smallest details of my life, I have been able to see that God has been with me step by step and has been revealing new opportunities for me. Certes, il y a eu des moments difficiles, très difficiles à traverser, mais sa parole a été un rempart. There have been difficult moments, very difficult moments, but his word has always been a rampart for me. Quand je pense à ces moments difficiles et que je vois comment Dieu les renverse par sa toute puissance, il me manque les mots justes, le langage juste pour lui être reconnaissant. When I think of those difficult moments and I see how God has overcome them with his almighty power, I struggle to find the right words, the language that could express my gratitude. Mes sœurs et mes frères, Dieu peut bénir chacun d'entre nous d'une manière très particulière. Our brothers and sisters, God can bless each one of us in very specific ways. Quand j'observe comment Dieu nous gratifie de la vie, de la santé et de tant d'autres choses, when I see how God gives us life, health and so many things, quand je vois les accidents, les maladies, la mort et les pires situations, alors que nous sommes tous réunis ici dans la joie. When I also see accidents, 
illnesses, death, and the worst possible situations, whilst we are gathered here in love together, in joy. Je découvre que nous pouvons, chacun à notre manière, offrir à Dieu notre temps, nos talents, nos biens, non pas parce que nous en avons beaucoup, mais par gratitude, dans la joie, sans attendre de retour. I discover that we can all, each in his or her own way, share our time, our talent, our treasure, not because we have so much, but through sheer gratitude, with joy, without expecting anything in return. Dieu lui-même nous bénira à sa manière, ce qui nous fera toujours comprendre qu'il est Dieu. God will bless us in his own way, which will help us better understand him as God. Lorsque ma mère était encore en vie, non seulement elle continuait à me montrer sa générosité, mais je me suis rendu compte que la générosité faisait partie de sa vie quotidienne. When my mother was still alive, not only did she continue to show me her generosity, but I understood just how much generosity was a part of her daily life. Même sur son lit de mort, Quelques instants avant son départ définitif, elle pouvait encore exercer sa générosité en donnant des instructions très claires sur ce qu'elle pouvait encore avoir afin que nous puissions le partager avec ceux qu'elle pensait être dans le besoin. Even on her deathbed, minutes before she left us, she was again exercising her generosity and giving very clear instructions on what she wanted done with what she had so that we could share it with those she thought needed it the most. J'ai été impressionné par cet aspect de ma mère et j'ai donc décidé d'améliorer mon exercice personnel en termes de générosité. This aspect of my mother's behavior really impressed me and I decided that I needed to improve my own personal approach to generosity. La générosité est une discipline à laquelle nous sommes tous appelés peu importe ce que nous sommes ou ce que nous avons, peu ou beaucoup. Generosity is a discipline that we are all called to exercise, regardless of who we are and what we have, be it very little or a great deal. En cette étape de réponse généreuse des disciples, nous nous efforçons d'aligner notre cœur sur celui de Dieu. At this step of our disciples' generous response, we try and align our hearts with that of God. Nos offrandes ne servent pas seulement à, à remplir des budgets ou à financer la mission. Our offerings are not only going to serve to fill budgets or help the missionary work. Par nos offrandes, nous pouvons exprimer de manière tangible notre gratitude envers Dieu qui est le donateur de tout. Through our offerings, we can express in a very tangible way our gratitude towards God who is the giver of all. Lorsque nous partageons notre dîme pour la mission, soit en déposant de l'argent dans les paniers, soit en donnant en ligne sur covchrist.org bar give, soit en scannant le code QR fourni, nous profitons de ce moment pour remercier Dieu pour les nombreux pour les nombreux dans pour les nombreux dons reçus dans la vie. As we share our tithing for the mission, be it putting cash into the baskets or giving online on seaofchrist.org slash give or on scanning the QR codes that have been provided, we are taking advantage of this opportunity to thank God for the many gifts we have received in our lives. Nos cœurs s'alignent sur celui de Dieu Lorsque nous recevons avec gratitude et répondons fidèlement en vivant la mission du Christ. Our hearts are aligned with that of God when we receive with gratitude and then respond faithfully in supporting the mission of Christ. 10% des offrandes que nous donnons aujourd'hui seront dirigées vers l'initiative de mission abolir la pauvreté et faire cesser les souffrances. 10% of the offerings taken today will go towards the uh, initiative of abolishing poverty and reducing suffering in the world. Tandis que 90% seront utilisés 
pour supporter la conférence mondiale. And 90% will go towards helping finance this world conference. En ce moment, nous demandons au protocole des Ashes de se mettre debout. I would ask the Ashes to stand now, please. Prions. Let us pray. Éternel notre Dieu, toi qui donnes sans regret ni retour. Eternal God, you who give without asking for anything in return. Toi qui donnes en tout temps, toi qui donnes depuis le commencement. You who give at all times, who has been giving since the beginning of time. Nous savons que tu ne vas jamais te fatiguer et nous comptons sur toi pour nous apprendre aussi à donner avec joie et conviction, à donner en tout temps comme toi tu le fais. We know that you will never tire and we can count on you and we ask you to help us learn to give more with joy and conviction at all times just as you do. Exerce nos cœurs à avoir, à avoir ceux qui sont dans le besoin, dans la détresse et ceux qui sont dévoués pour ton œuvre. Help train our hearts to see those who are in need, those in distress and those who are devoted to accomplishing your work. Donne-nous les yeux et la sagesse pour aligner nos cœurs avec la, ta volonté afin que nous soyons plus généreux. Give us the eyes and the wisdom to align our hearts with your will so that we can become more generous. Alors que nous allons donner notre réponse généreuse en tant que disciples à travers le monde lors de cette conférence mondiale, now that we are about to give our dis generous response as disciples, throughout the world during this world conference. Eternal Dieu, accept nos offrandes, sanctifie-les et bénis-les au nom de Jésus, notre Seigneur et notre Sauveur. Amen. Eternal God, accept our offerings, sanctify them, bless them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Collectively and individually, you are loved with an everlasting love that delights in each faithful step taken. God yearns to draw you close so that wounds may be healed, emptiness filled, and hope strengthened. Do not turn away in pride, fear, or guilt from the one who seeks only the best for you you and your loved ones. Come before your eternal creator with open minds, open hearts, and discover the blessings of the gospel anew. Be vulnerable to divine grace.
तुम्बर पुत्र आम्भर त्राणकर्ता प्रभु जीशुख्रीष्ट शरीर एवं रक्तर आत्मिक खाद्य सहित आम को परितृप्त करेतु एवं आम्भ मान तुम्बर पुत्र शरीर जीवंत अंग एवं तुम अनंत राज्यर अधिकारी को निश्चित करेतु आम तुमको धन्यवाद देवु पिता बर्तमान तुम्हें जो कार्य करने को आम को दे जथा आम्भर प्रभु जीशुख्रीष्ट विश्वस्त साक्ष्य भाव तुमको प्रेम और सेवा करने आम को प्रेरण कर प्रभु जीशुख्रीष्ट तुम्भर एवं पवित्र आत्मा को गौरव व महिमा होगे जुगे आमे Almighty and ever living God we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your son our savior Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your son and heirs of your eternal kingdom and now father send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our lord to him you and the holy spirit be honor and glory now and forever amen